We are bombarded every day with images of perfection, perfect teeth, perfect families, perfect holidays on perfect yachts, perfect banana bread, perfect Instagram stories. Perfection is everywhere and it's leading us to feel that we too must be perfect in everything that we do. Now that sounds like it's a fantastic thing to want and a fantastic thing to strive for, and maybe it is in some cases. However, perfectionism can have some really, really poor consequences. And in this video, I want to talk a little bit about perfectionism, what it is and what problems it might have for those of us in research. Perfectionism is quite a common trait among academics. Now, a meta-analytical study in 2006 by Stober and Otto showed us that perfectionism is common and that it can be broken down into different kinds of perfectionism. And while it can have many, many positive features, including motivation and so on, the negative consequences can often be quite severe. So perfectionism, it's a double-edged sword. So on the one hand, you can have perfectionism that is quite positive and quite motivating, and that's what psychologists call perfectionist strivings. But on the other hand, you can have the sort of negative consequences, and these are what the psychologists call perfectionist concerns. And so it's in some cases the balance between the two of these things or the, the way in which they manifest that can generate the problems procrastination can creep in as a consequence of these perfectionist ideals where the person is so afraid that what they're going to do is not going to be perfect. They never really get going and it can lead to putting things off, it can lead to missed deadlines, and that in the long term can lead to an erosion of confidence in the researcher themselves and in other people towards that researcher, the negative consequences can build over time. So it's very, very important to consider perfectionism and what it is and how it affects all of us. So how should we think about perfectionism? Well, if you consider this to be a kind of multidimensional or at least two-dimensional space, where on one dimension you have perfectionist strivings, and on the other dimension you have perfectionist concerns. And where we see the problems arise typically, though not always, is when an individual has high levels of perfectionist strivings and high levels of perfectionist concerns at the same time. If you've got somebody who's got high levels of perfectionist strivings but lowish levels of perfectionist concerns, then typically that kind of perfectionism is not a problem. So it's important to know that it's not all perfectionist tendencies that are problematic. It's typically, though not always, perfectionist tendencies when there are high levels of perfectionist strivings and high levels of perfectionist concerns. I have a very good example of a situation where perfectionism or the pursuit of perfectionism wasn't really a good idea. So at the beginning of 2022, I started to write a book. So in order to get prepared to write this book, I downloaded all of the various papers I needed to download. I bought new software that was going to help me write this book. I read things that I'd never read before. I started going down rabbit holes, trying to get uh, the most interesting and important papers. And then th those led on to more papers and those led on to more papers. And then I started writing and then I rewrote what I'd written. And then I rewrote that and I rewrote it and rewrote it. And after six months, I realized that, in fact, I'd only written 15 pages of this book. Now, the book is going to have to be about 150 pages long, and I'd written only 15. And that's when I knew that I was having these perfectionist concerns, that I was not making progress because I was trying to be absolutely perfect in everything that I was doing. The consequence for me was recognizing this and then deciding that, well, the alternative to perfectionism is not actually sloppiness and it's not mediocrity. It's productivity, it's reality, it's getting going, doing something that's at a very, very high standard, moving the subject area along and making sure that something really, really happens and that it's at a standard that you can live with and that is good enough. Perhaps this is a good time to ask you to give this video a thumbs up if you like what you've gotten so far. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel or that you're new here, please subscribe to this channel and come back where I talk about all kinds of things to do with research. 
One of the most common things that you see in perfectionist tendencies is the tendency to compare yourself to other people, perhaps a role model or some hero that you feel is the person that you most aspire to be like or whose work you think you'd like to emulate. And this constant concern that what you're doing is not as good as this other person, that kind of thing can be very, very debilitating, can lead to an awful lot of self-confidence being eroded away and a lot of self-doubt creeping through. Another particularly toxic manifestation of perfectionism is when a person expects what they feel is perfection from somebody else, maybe in their own research group or institute or whatever, and expecting this kind of perfection from these other people and nothing is ever really good enough. That kind of thing is very, very toxic. It comes I guess is a bit of a relief to discover that some of the greatest thinkers of all time were not perfectionists and they kind of knew they weren't perfectionists. I'm thinking here in particular of somebody like Charles Darwin. So Charles Darwin's book on the origin of species by means of natural selection probably had, I'm going to say, the biggest influence on humanity of any book ever written, certainly any book in terms of research that it was ever written. And in that book, Darwin talks about evolution and natural selection and so on. But there were many, many things that were missing from that book, things that Darwin didn't know about. And if he was a perfectionist, he might never have written the book because he didn't know about the rules of inheritance. In fact, he got those quite wrong. He didn't know anything about what we now know as random genetic drift. He just didn't know anything about it. He didn't know about population genetics. He didn't know about DNA. He didn't know about chromosomes. There were so many things in his explanation of evolution by natural selection that were not there. They were missing. And Darwin knew they were missing and he knew that these explanations were needed to fully explain evolution. But he didn't wait. He was productive. He published his book and he let people see what was there so that maybe somebody else could add to it. But a perfectionist Darwin was not. A realist he was and somebody who was very productive. And I think there's a big lesson there that some of the greatest thinkers weren't themselves perfectionists. So my first tip is to be aware when perfectionist tendencies start to creep into your daily life, just to be aware of what triggers them, to be aware of how they work for you. And if you are aware that they are part of what's happening in your world right now, then perhaps you can develop strategies to mitigate these tendencies and to do something about them. Perfectionists often set unrealistic goals for themselves, set goals that are absolutely enormous. And that's part of the problem, that unless you can actually solve this enormous problem, then you're not going to solve any problem at all. So my advice to you is to set realistic goals. If you've got a big overall goal, break it down into smaller parts and work on those and be more productive in doing so and aim for productivity and reality rather than perfectionism. Give yourself permission to make mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes. And quite often, if we're trying to do something incredibly difficult and important, uh, it's almost inevitable that you will make mistakes. And indeed, there are some schools of thought where they say that making mistakes is, is not just an option. It's inevitable or it's essential. So I think that having that idea that perhaps you might make mistakes and all mistakes can be corrected in the future, they can be recovered and so on, but giving yourself that permission will make you a more productive person, will be able to allow you to move forward with what you are doing. Finally, I would say to you that you should seek professional help if you feel that this perfectionist problem is something that is not going to go away. Seek professional help. There is a lot known about this kind of condition and you really can get very, very good help for this. Thank you for viewing this video. Please check out some of my other videos on this channel. This is where I come to talk about research and to talk about productivity and to talk about ways in which we can do better research and we can live better lives trying to do the best research that we can do.